Holy cow, look at that. Look at my thumb. Looks like hell. It's awesome. All right, guys, this lake is looking really, really good. As I expected, lots of scum. Sun isn't even up yet. And I would expect we're gonna get some fish. Let's grab the frog. Just run right on the outside of this weed line. Let's see how I kind of just, not really walking the dog. I'm just kind of reeling in a little bit faster than that. Another thing to listen for when you're fishing mats and wondering if there are bass here is if you hear little bluegill pops. And these bluegill are underneath these mats and they're just eating little things off of the grass. And where there are bluegill, and there are bass. Oh, got one. Oh man, he didn't even hit it hard. It's a little guy. Yeah, he barely hit it. Little, little guy. Very, very warm, which right now I think is a good thing. I think that means these fish might be active. So, little guy, let's let him go. All right, there's one for the morning. Hopefully we can find some bigger fish. Yeah, he hit it right on the outside of that weed edge. They try to hit it right before it goes over the weeds because if they can see it in the open water, it's much easier to attack. Oh, I just, I missed one. There he is. Man, really light hits. And here's the reason why, again, you bring heavy braid. And this is another smaller fish. Oh, okay, bud. You just soaked me, the camera, everything. Gross, Ugh. Another, another small fish, but that was in that opening too, so. Second fish that hasn't hit in the grass, but in the clear water. Sometimes you need to do this. You need to kind of squirt out the, uh, the water that's in these things. Oh, that blew up right away. That fish bit 100% reaction strike. That was again in the open water, not in the muck. Hadn't even moved the bait yet. There we go. That's a better one. And better, he's not, he's no giant by any means, but it's a little better fish. Early in the morning, I'll take it. He didn't smash it. None of these fish are biting super hard. I'm not getting these big topwater explosions. And this is really good scum. Some scum out there is not very good. This is thin enough. I can see clear lines where my my frog went. I mean, I guess that's an important thing about frog fishing is it would be really stupid of me to just cast straight into the middle of there. And if I caught a fish at the end, I would have to bring him through all the stuff, stir up a lot of water. So I'm working my way down this bank, keeping as much good water as possible. And that was not a great cast. I should probably also be a little bit quieter. Whoa, man, that was a real frog. That scared the crap out of me okay well it was a little surprising thought we might get some back in there but not really Let's see if we can find any fish down this way Ooh, oh that was that was fish i'm going to deviate from the frog a little bit here i'm going to switch up baits and this is another part of frog fishing that i think everyone needs to keep in mind is that a frog isn't going to catch you everything if you want all the fish or as many fish as possible you should have a different type of top water with you and you should have a Senko, some sort of type of soft plastic. It was not a very good cast. It wasn't where I was aiming at all. There we go, I got one. Skate him in. Oh man, he swallowed this thing. Nope, oh, nope, starting to come loose. There we go. That's a good one. It's 
probably the fattest one of the day, probably the heaviest. He's probably a pound, maybe a pound and a quarter. So still nothing giant. Now with this, you want something completely different in terms of gear than the frog. This, I have a medium action, extra fast tip rod. Allows me really to get a lot of action out of this bait. That's a better cast. There we go. There's fish number two. Well, this is a better one, I think. I think this is a better fish. I haven't even seen him. Oh, he's in the grass. I'll bet he just came loose. Oh yeah, this. Oh gosh, yes. This is definitely, definitely. Oh my gosh, this is like a four pounder. Oh my gosh, guys. This is way bigger than I thought. This is one of my biggest fish for the year. This is way bigger than I thought it was. Barely hooked him too. Oh my gosh, look at how fat this fish is. Wow, beautiful fish. It's probably three and a half, maybe close to four, just because of how fat she is. Wow. Okay. This is the biggest fish I've caught in this lake. I don't, I haven't caught fish like that here. Had a bite. Hadn't even moved it yet. There are some fish out there. Oh man, he blew up really good on it and I totally missed him. This isn't even my go-to secondary bait. I was gonna say, you know, next thing you should be throwing is a Senko along these weed edges. And I have that tied on another rod. However, I'm really not feeling going to that right now because this is working so well. Wow. Oh my God. I got him. He's running right at me. This has got to be a pretty good fish. That was a huge explosion. I hope I got that. This is not that big of a fish. Maybe one of the best explosions I've had all year. <laughs> Man, another really good fish. Wow, he blew up on it. Just totally annihilated it. What's crazy about this is I have really not even moved more than 20 feet. Oh, I just missed a really good bite. Shoot. Man, they are out there. So, my go-to secondary bait is the Stanko. And this one's really simple. This is a phenomenal go-to secondary bait. These fish will bite this. I got one right now. First cast. I mean, if you were unsure, thought I was lying or something, There we go. Cinco fish. Oh, little guy. The frog and the Cinco go together like peanut butter and jelly. When one isn't working, you throw the other. When a fish misses the frog, throw the Cinco. There's another one. Immediately jumped out from the shore. It's a little better one. Like I said, how to fish how to fish frog? Have other other baits to pair it with. That was on top too. So that was basically like a top water Senko. Never heard of that strategy. Top water Senkos? They work wonders. Senko's starting to get a little old. I don't even think this is a Senko. I think this is a yumdinger. I should be correct. We should probably start moving spots because we've, I think, picked this place apart. I don't know what we're at, like seven, eight, nine, ten fish. I got a big old branch. 
I hooked me a tree bass. That's why you want to have your bread. You're gonna be casting this stuff, this into the, some thick stuff. Fish just missed it. It's in a hard spot too to try to cast again right there. That's gonna be difficult. Yeah, this one's gonna be difficult. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get it back to that spot. Oh, 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 oh. Problems in like in a tree too. Oh. Oh god. Okay, if he doesn't bite here, I'm giving up. Oh my god! He missed it again! Oop, oh, we got another good cast right here. Nope. Uh, he might be gone. Three bites might be the uh, might be his max. Let's see if we can get Oh, this is a good cast, dude. Oh my god! That was an amazing, amazing blow up. Oh, he's in this thick stuff. I don't even think he's that big. Oh my gosh, that was an amazing blow up. <laughs> he is in here. Holy cow. Yeah, I know. You're mean. You wanted it. Wow. He exploded out of the water on this thing. Jeez, you are a mean, mean, mean fish. Mean sucker. I believe there's something back there. Whatever that was, it was big. I'm gonna go really slow here. Pause it, take my time. <laughs> Guys, I have a giant. Oh no, he's got me hung up. Guys, oh my god, I have a huge pike. This is a monster pike. This do you see this? I didn't even know there were pike in here. Look at this pike. I didn't know there were pike in this lake. Look at that. This is a really healthy fish. I I thought this was a giant bass at first. This is this is amazing. It's probably a good. I don't know, 28. This is why you bring pliers. Look at that. All right, there she is. Beautiful fish. He had no idea there were pike in here. That's awesome. Let's uh, see how ready she is to go. Oh my God, soaked me. There she is because she's freaked out. Buddy, go back. Holy cow. They had me going. Got wrapped up in the tree. That was craziness. So slimy. Jeez, my reel is just covered in slime. To be honest, I would have preferred a seven pound bass. I think most people would though. Okay, well, that added some unexpected excitement to my day. We're probably gonna take off and go to another lake where I'm pretty sure there aren't any pike. I had some good luck here last week. Looks like a lot of the slop on top has shifted around. Oh my God, Jeez Louise. I would have left it there if I stupidly didn't have this tree attached. Okay, that was a big wake. There we go. Oh, ho, ho. 
There's a three pounder. It's a pretty long fish. Small mouth, but heavy fish. Right on the lens. And as soon as he showed himself, I knew. Got on top of that muck there, slow rolled it, just gently popped it right on top of that weed, and boom, engulfed it. I love metal, metal railings along the side. Like this metal edging always holds fish. Oh my gosh. That was a giant. Maybe it wasn't. Well, there's another one. Pretty fish. Pound and a half. Man, mean. All right, we're at the final spot of the day. We're gonna see if we can catch a couple more frogfish and then we're gonna call it quits. Final lake. I was gonna try to get some on the frog, but I'm really surprised. Looks like all the vegetation is gone. I don't know whether they dumped some sort of chemical in here, but the weeds that I expected to see are not here. I don't know why people get so afraid of their lake having some weeds in it. It's a good thing. Jeez, that was terrible. I was trying to get a bomb of cast out there. Oh, 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 oh. I got one. I just hand line that fish. I feel like I'm fly fishing right now. Oh, he's gonna get off. There's no way. Yeah, he got off. Oh my gosh. I can't believe that. I was trying to pick a bird's nest and he hit it and ate it. Oh, that sucks. That was just in the middle of the lake. That was so weird. Man, if I had caught that, that would have been ridiculous. The world's got a weird bluish tint. No, I'm not throwing a... Uh, a chartreuse crankbait. I'm just noting that it didn't have that before and uh, makes me wonder what some people did to this lake. What did they pour in here? Jeez. Oh gosh, right here at the, at the shore. Oh my goodness. There's another three plus pound fish right at the shore. I mean, basically at my feet. Oh, that's a healthy fish right there. Guys, I can actually see the chemicals in this lake pooled up in the shallows. That just ticks me off. There's no reason to kill all the weeds and potentially fish in here by dumping chemicals. It's just, it's not needed. There's a frog fish. Not a big one. Little guy. There we go. It's a little bit better fish. Threw it on the bank. That's another tip of mine. If you can throw it across the lake, throw it on the bank. Throw it on the bank. Let it come in softly, give it a couple soft twitches, and uh, these fish will just hit it. They think they ambushed it, but you ambushed them. Oh my gosh, this one's gripper teeth are so sharp, like crazy sharp. Holy cow, look at that, look at my thumb. Looks like hell, it's awesome. Oh my gosh, another giant. 
Come on. Oh my goodness. Come here, come here, come here. Oh yes. Gosh. Four pounder. Holy cow. Holy moly. Look at that. That is another chunk of a fish. That's one more on the Senko, the weightless Senko. Guys, it catches giants. Well guys, it's no frog and fish, but uh, it's a nice fish again on that Senko, right at my feet. Guys, this is a lot of fun. It's summertime, this is what you should be throwing. Frogs, Senkos, and catching big old bass like this. Now leave a like below, please. Uh, leave some comments below, and if uh, you want me to change it up, do something different. And uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please hit that subscribe button below. We'll be doing a bunch more videos just like this. So stay tuned for more. Let's give uh, old Sally here, <sighs> just like good old LFG. Let's let it go, and then uh, I'm gonna see you guys tomorrow. Let's let this buddy go. Today we're gonna be talking about a topic that I think is a pretty simple concept, but it's one that I get a lot of questions on and I think everyone should know how to do. And that is frog fishing. Frog fishing overall is a pretty simple concept. Really, what you're trying to do is imitate something on top, typically a frog, and get those fish to create a reaction strike. It's really pretty simple. You need a couple things. I mean, from a, from a hardware standpoint, you need a good, reliable, long casting reel. And I've got a die with the Tula Type R, and this is an 8.1 to 1 gear ratio. And that gear ratio is important, and I like something that's gonna be able to reel in a lot quicker. You can get leverage over those fish faster. A stout rod is important too. I like a heavy rod. I've got a ducket heavy right here. You don't need a heavy rod. I've fished frogs on medium heavy before, but it makes your life a little bit easier and you know that that rod shouldn't break as you're horsing these fish in out of those weeds. For a line standpoint, I like 40 or 50 pound braid. A lot of people go with 65 pound braid and I don't think you necessarily need that. 40 or 50 pound is gonna give you a lot better castability and it's going to be, it's gonna stand up to the majority of things that you're gonna run into. And then from a frog standpoint, so my personal preference is I really like the Spro Bronze Eye Junior. It's small and compact meaning that a lot of fish are gonna be able to eat this. The plastic itself is pretty soft, meaning that I can compress it and the fish can compress it and get a better hook set. It walks fairly easily, although I'm not a huge person on walking the frog. I don't think it necessarily needs to be done. And this smaller bait still casts very, very far, which is important. Now, a lot of people ask the question, what color frogs do they need? Well, the top does not matter. Don't get suckered into the stores and what the top of the frog looks like, because the the fish cannot see that. They see the bottom. Now this one in particular has a black bottom. Generally the concept is a black bottom frog on dark cloudy days or at night, a white bottom frog on sunny bright days. I don't think you need to follow this logic. I actually think something with a darker bottom will work all the time around, which is why I carry that. So for a retrieve, I like to vary up my retrieve. I usually will kind of not really walk the dog, but I will kind of scupper it along the surface pretty quick. I will move it fairly fast. When this is going over scum, I like to vary it up a little bit. I like to go really fast or slow it down, it just depends. If the fish are not biting, but I truly think there are fish there, I will reel in much quicker to try to create a reaction strike. And even if these fish miss it, I don't care. As soon as they move in that scum, they've given up what's really important to me, and that's their location. And then I can hone in and slow the bait down, even just tease and tempt them into biting in that spot. So just getting those fish to move is really, really important because it shows me where they're at. Another style that I like to fish is reeling this thing in pretty quick, kind of scuppering it along the surface up until you get to a weed edge. So that's an open water, bring it up to that weed edge and then pausing it, just stopping it completely, giving it five to 30 seconds, just waiting there. And then one to two quick twitches. And I can get a lot of reaction strikes that way too, because that's all what this is. This is all reaction strikes. These fish are going to miss this oftentimes because they can't see it. They see a silhouette above them. That's all they see. So that brings up an important part of frog fishing, and that is the hook set. It's very easy 
to get tempted when that fish blows up and your heart starts racing, because it will be racing, to set the hook right away. And that's not what you want to do. Typically, people say wait one to two seconds. In my opinion, there is no time frame to wait for. You want to wait to feel that fish actually tug on your line. It takes patience and it takes practice because it's very easy to jump the gun and set the hook early. Now, one of the biggest questions people who frog fish a lot get is why are you using 40, 50, 65 pound braid when you're fighting a two, three pound fish? It's a good question. It, it aggravates just about most fishermen because it's not about the size of the fish, it's about the conditions you're fishing. And we are fishing in the heaviest of cover, in weeds, grass, brush piles, anything. And these fish, once you set the hook, can dive in that and get wrapped, tangled up. And, uh, and it's those things that can cause abrasions, um, that can get caught in the line are why we're using this heavy line. It's not uncommon for me to reel in so much grass that I can't tell that there is a fish. And wet grass, when you've got that much, can be really, really heavy. Easily 10 to 15 pounds of just grass alone. Two, I mean, I've set the hook and these fish have buried themselves quickly into the grass to the point where I'm pulling as hard as I can on that line and these fish won't budge. That's again why you want a heavy, heavy rod Ideally, and you want some heavy, heavy braid, so you're not gonna break off. And that's another reason why you want a faster gear ratio, something like this, is because those you can get those fish out of that cover quickly. Time of day. So this morning, I'm out here, it's 5.15 in the morning, the sun just popped up right behind you, and uh, we're gonna be hitting up this lake, lots of scum, that's what we're looking for, scummy, scummy lakes. And I think, personally, morning is the best time for frog fishing. Uh, second to that would be mid to late evening in that 6 to 7.30 range, something in low light conditions. Guys, that's a quick wrap up of how I frog fish and, and I thought that was important for you guys who are maybe starting out frog fishing. I think everyone needs to do this because once you start catching a few fish on something like this, I guarantee you it's going to be one of your favorite styles of fishing. It is for me. And now let's go put all that to use on the lake right there. Let's go. Oh my gosh, did you see that? It's like acrobatics. Don't you do it. <laughs> All right, done playing with frogs. <laughs> 